Hello everyone, this is Professor Bailey. I am going to show you ways to use Desmos to make life much easier on you for the assessment with regards to calculating our discrete distributions involving factorials. Let's start with our Poisson distribution. And we'll call this P of X. Don't worry about the P. Now we know the Poisson distribution is equal to our mean, mu, and uh, we don't have a letter for mu, so let's just call that u, about as close as we can get, to the power of x, okay, times e to the power of negative u, x factorial. But we see, you'll notice we have a slider for u. Let's add that, okay? Now, in the case of the problem we had earlier today, we had an example of a drive through where the mean was five cars. So in this case, our mean is 5. Okay, and you'll notice that our peak comes right around 5. Okay? Now, let's start doing some problems. Let's suppose I ask you, what are the odds of exactly 4 cars arriving? We just put in P of 4. That's it. 17.5%. Now, what if I ask you, what are the odds of having six or more cars? Well, that would be P of 6 plus P of 7 plus P of 8 plus P of 9 plus P of 10. You can see we keep going. The probability gets higher and higher. But we can use the complement rule and say if it's 6 or higher, then it can't be 5 or lower. So 1 minus p of 0 plus p of 1 plus p of 2 plus p of 3 plus p of 4 plus p of 5. And just like that, we have our answer. And that's the use of the complement rule. So, let's suppose I asked you to solve this type of problem, and you solved it using this and using your formula sheet, but you wanted to know how to put it on your exam submission to get full credit for your work. Here's what you'd want to do. The first thing you'd do is you'd say our mean is 5, and the, the Poisson distribution is mu to the power of x times e to the negative mu, all of that divided by x factorial. In this case, our mean mu is 5, so our Poisson distribution is 5 to the x times e to the negative 5 divided by x factorial. Now, you then move on to the actual solving. You would say that the probability of being 6 or higher is the same as 1 minus the probability of being 5 or lower, so lower than 6. And then you'd say that is equal to 1 minus the probability of 0 plus the probability of 1 plus the probability of 2, plus the probability of 3, plus the probability of 4, plus the probability of 5. Okay? So, and then, once you do that, you can then say that whole expression, which is this thing right here, is equal to 0.384, and you'd get your full credit. I am interested in knowing that you know which formula to use, which laws to use, and how to use them, as opposed to mundane memorization and calculations. So that's an example of the Poisson distribution. Now, let's move on to the binomial distribution. Our binomial distribution we're going to denote as b of x. And that is equal to n factorial divided by x factorial times n minus x factorial times lowercase p, which is a probability, to the power of x times 1 minus p to the power of n. You'll have to use the parentheses here, n minus x. We're going to add all of our sliders. And there we go. So let's say for our problem, we are guessing on a true-false quiz, and it has 10 problems. So we have 10 trials, and the probability of randomly guessing is 50%. That is going to be this blue one. So here... Uh, it's this blue one. See the blue one? Sorry, or bluish pink. Pink? No, purple. I'm sorry, purple. That looks purple. That's our purple one. You can see it centers on 5. So, let's suppose I asked you, 
What are the odds of guessing your way to passing, i.e., six or better? Well, in that case, that is going to be equal to the binomial of six plus the binomial of seven plus the binomial of eight plus the binomial of nine plus the binomial at 10. So let's say the problem asked you, you have a 10 question true false quiz and you randomly guess on everything. What are your odds of passing? Where passing is guessing six out of 10 or better. In that case, this is the work you'd show where here the number of trials is 10. The probability of guessing correctly is 50%. And we use a binomial distribution by summing up these probabilities. Now, let's suppose you have that answer and say, okay, what amount of this work do I need to show on the exam to get full credit? Here's what you're going to do. You're going to say, first of all, we have 10 trials, so n is 10. Our odds of getting it correctly, i.e. a success, are 50%. So p is 50%. Additionally, our binomial distribution formula is given by this. And you'll write that down. And then you'll say, we plug in n equals 10 and p equals 0.5. Then you'll say the probability of getting six or higher is equal to this, b6 plus b7 plus b8 plus b9 plus b10. And then you'd say that is equal to 0.377 in this case. And you'd get full credit. And that is how you use the binomial distribution. Now we have one more, and it's the really big nasty one, for the hypergeometric distribution. And we're going to call this h of x. And this, we'll start with the denominator, because that's the easier one. The denominator is this, n factorial divided by, uh, well here we've already used n, I'm going to take out this n for a moment because we have already used it. So let me take it out. So here we go. n factorial times n factorial, n minus n factorial. That's our denominator. Our numerator has two parts. Our first part, we have r factorial, and then x factorial, r minus x factorial. Okay? Our other one, we have n minus r, oh no, 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 capital N, n minus r factorial divided by, oh god, this is a nasty one, n minus x factorial. I mean, every time I see it, I know because I've seen it before, just every time, it's just wow. And then here, we have big parentheses, n minus n minus r minus x, that whole thing factorial. Now, we're going to add all these sliders. So in this case, x is our number of successes, big N is our population size, lowercase n is the number of trials, and r are the population elements labeled success. So in this case, let's say we're picking from a deck of cards, okay? And we're picking four cards at random. So in this case, our number of trials, lowercase n, is four. The total number of cards is 52. Okay, and now the, well, let's suppose we're picking four cards and we want them to be aces. In that case, we have four aces in the deck of cards, so R is four. In this case, our green one right here is our hypergeometric distribution. Let's suppose I asked you, what are the odds of getting at least one ace? Well, the odds of getting at least one ace are, in, th in this case, it could be one ace, it could be two aces, it could be three aces, or it could be four aces. So therefore, as long as we don't get zero aces, we're fine. So we can use the complement rule and do one minus h of zero. So and therefore, it'd be 28.1%, so 0.281. So let's say it's the exam, and I, you're asked, how should I show this work? Well, here's what you're going to do. You're going to say, we identify our population size, capital N, as 52. We identify our number of trials, lowercase n, as 4. And the number of this item, or success, in our population is 4. So that's our r value. Our whole h of x is equal to, x, uh, is equal to this. You'll write that whole thing down, where r equals 4, n equals 52, and lowercase n equals 4. 
And then you'll say, we know that the probability of being one or better is the complement of it. So one or one minus the complement, which is one minus h of zero. And then you can say that's equal to 0.281. If you don't want to write this whole thing out, then you're going to have to show all your calculations. So those are your two options. And I hope this has helped. Bye-bye.